Hello, everybody. All right, so uh, let's keep talking about electricity. We're now going to go a little bit off the beaten path here. So, so far, um, we've done uh, basic circuit analysis and talked about current electricity. Um, we're going to now start talking about how electricity is related to magnetism. All right, so you probably have seen in, in elementary school, um, you know, magnets, and you've done electricity in grade nine and stuff, and you, you may have seen some parallels and, uh, and may have had a few thoughts about this stuff already. All right, when we see um, charges, we know that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Right? That was our law of electric charges that we've talked about so far. And you may have seen something similar with, with magnets, where uh, north poles will repel and south poles will repel each other, and north and south poles will attract. So there's sort of like magnetic charges, in a way, that we have these poles. Um, it is different in that there's both sides. Right? When you have a positive object, it's positive. With magnets, you can't have a north just by itself, right? For there to be a north, there has to be a south. Uh, magnetic monopoles don't exist classically. Um, there are, you know, some cutting edge theoretical ideas about magnetic monopoles at a quantum level, but don't worry about that. Uh, when we talk about a magnet, if you take a magnet, a north and south bar magnet, and you break it in half, you will now create two north and south bar magnets, right? That Where that break is, that'll split into a north and a south pole. Um, but again, uh, we have this, this sort of similarity in that they repel and attract according to likes and opposites, right? So are they related? And it turns out that they are. And this is um, arguably the most important uh, physics idea of the 19th century. This was what we call the unification of electricity and magnetism. And uh, it's, it's pretty complicated. Um, it, well, we talk about it a lot in grade 12. We can't really talk about it even in grade 12 because we don't have the, the mathematical language yet. You need some, some calculus, uh, some, we call it vector calculus, to be able to really talk about it in, in meaningful ways. Um, but we can talk about some of the bigger ideas even here in grade 11. Uh, the, the connections are, are really cool. And again, this is probably the most important um, physics idea of the 19th century, the 1800s, that where they took these two seemingly disparate ideas of electricity and magnetism and unified them into under one, uh, one theory, a, a unifi unifying theory of electromagnetism, we call it now. And again, it's it is pretty terrifying if you look at the math. Like this, this to you guys is just some sort of foreign language here. But these are what we call Maxwell's laws, and they govern how magnets and, uh, sorry, magnetism and electric, electric fields and magnetic fields interact with each other. But we don't care at the moment. All we care about is some of the simple ideas. And the first one we're going to talk about is, is Orsted's law. And this was a, a purely accidental discovery when they were playing with um, with current electricity in the early 1800s. A Danish physicist called Orsted um, saw that when they were putting large currents through wires, compasses were starting to, to wiggle in weird ways. Uh, there was a magnetic field generated by currents. A flow of electrons, a flow of charges, generates a magnetic field around it. And the way that it goes around it is something called the right hand rule. You see here, this, uh, I'm going to switch here for a second. This is going to be a bit terrifying. But, oh, I'm in the middle of the screen. Okay, so what we do is we use our, we use our right hand. So we take our right hand, okay, and your thumb, this is the current. Your current is the thumb. So we're going to take our thumb. I'm going to see if I can orient myself here. Uh, is my green screen messing up? Yeah, a little bit. All right, so we're going to do a little bit. Of, ooh, ooh, where am I? Ah, here I am. 
Okay, so my thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, and my fingers represent the magnetic field. And I'm going to close my hand. The way that my fingers close around the wire, those, the way my fingers are pointing is the direction in which the... Whoa. This is very mind warping because it's backwards. Ah, <laughs> the way the magnetic field is going around here, I can't even do it. Uh, <laughs> this is too much fun. Ooh, 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 I can't. It's backwards. So it's going around the wire. This, this, this way. This way. There we go. <laughs> around the wire, according to what we call the right hand rule. Okay, so when any of these questions ask you which way the magnetic field is going, get your right hand out, stick your thumb in the direction of the current, and your fingers go in the magnetic field. Okay, so that's Orsted's law. We can see it here. Uh, if we turn on a magnetic field, oh, and that's the, that's the, the current off, and then with the current on. Okay, and you can see as the current is on, the magnetic field is going around this wire and the compass is aligning itself to that wire. Let's go back and see that again. As he turns on the circuit, it's now going around the wire. Once we turn off, it aligns itself to the magnetic field of the Earth and then when it goes on, we have it aligned to the to the, to the um, magnetic field generated by that current. So, uh, Orsted's law states, a current passing through a conductor will create a magnetic field at right angles to the current. Now, uh, just keep in mind that when we're using the right-hand rule, we're using our thumb as our current direction, that's the conventional current. Okay, this is part of the reason why we never changed conventional current because it makes a lot more sense for the rest of our conventions, like here for Orsted's law, for the right-hand rule. That is, we, our thumb points in the direction of I, the current, and our fingers go around it. That's our right-hand rule. So again, using our... Let's see if I can do this one. Okay, which way? There it is. Okay, the thumb represents the current. I'm going to duck here a little bit. And the fingers going around this wire represent this magnetic field Ooh, going around here, okay? So that's our right-hand rule. Using the thumb as the direction of the current, the magnetic field will be in the direction of your closing fingers around the current. It's always fun when uh, we do this, the exam or tests in this unit, and... Uh, Everybody's doing fun things, especially in grade 12, because there's different right-hand rules, and you got to do some... Uh, actually, no, we'll do that here, too, with the with the motor principle. You'll have a, another right-hand rule where you're going to have to do some sort of strange uh, uh, hand manipulations to, to figure out the answer. Um, to make our lives easier, since we're on a page, um, to show stuff going in and out, we have a, a, a writing convention. The drawing convention, sorry, to help us understand this. So uh, using the right-hand rule, if this, is, this, this represents, this X here represents the current. This is a cross-section, this circle here is the cross-section of a wire, let's say. And the current right now is going into your screen. So my thumb is going to go into the screen. Oh, we're gonna, my thumb's going to go into the screen, and my fingers are going to close in this direction. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's going to go around and around, according to the right-hand rule. If, let's say, now it's going to come out of the screen, and my thumb is going to point out of the screen, my fingers will close in this direction for the right-hand rule. Uh, the way you can think about it is think of it like an arrow. Um, the back of the arrow, you would see the fletchings here. And you'd see an X. And if you, you were looking at the front of an arrow, you would see the arrowhead. So that represents, the dot represents the arrowhead. And, sorry, the dot represents the arrowhead. And the X represents the fletchings. So these fletchings here is the X. If we're looking at it from behind. And if we're looking at it from the front, we would see the arrowhead, which are these dots. Okay? So uh, this convention allows us to draw these three-dimensional things on our two-dimensional paper more easily at least. Um, again, also notice um, 
when I draw these lines, uh, the closer they are together represents the strength of the field. Okay, so the magnetic field, it goes down by um, 1 over r squared again. So I'm we'll just do to, in this case, cylindrical symmetry. So it's going to go down, it's going to drop as, as an r squared. So as it goes down, it's, it's going to get weaker. Now, it's when I say weaker, it's, it's really quite weak. Uh, for, a, for a regular wire, the, the strength is, is very, very minimal. You need to have some very large currents uh, to see these magnetic fields. Uh, not particularly safe. So let's go let's go back to the to the sixties and uh, see some lab demonstrations All connected from that. To a bus bar up okay. The top. So here we are. Through these wires. Second. Just hear that? And out through this copper strap. So here we can see um, bus bar over there. Okay. these wires let's that they're gonna have here. They're gonna put it. a large current All through right, these please, wires. Let's have a little juice here. And let's start gently. Let's have about a thousand amps to begin. Oh, just a thousand amps. No big deal, right? By the way, a thousand amps will, will, will kill you very, very, very quickly. Oh, tell them to call me back later. I'm Your wall plugs are like 15. Uh, how's it coming, Beans? You got... All right, let's go on up to 2,000. There we begin to go. On up to three. Let's, let's show it really... Oh, there we go. Four, five. I guess that's enough. Let's cut it off. So you see how the, um, as they put that current, all, all these wires have a current all in the same direction, so they all attracted to each other, because all of them generated their own magnetic fields that squeezed the bundle together, right? So as they, as these wires generated magnetic fields at these ridiculous currents, they were able to, uh, since all of the fields going around each other, each one has a, using our right hand rule, each one would have a, have a, have a, a magnetic field going around. Let's see, I'll, let's see if I can draw this on our screen here. So we're going to have one wire here, one wire here. So this one is going to generate, a, let's see, it's going to go in, so it's going to go around this way. And then the other one will have the same thing, right? Oh, whoops. I got that one backwards. So down, up. And notice these are going to add up to each other, and they're going to attract each other, right? This is going to be an attraction. In the same way, they're going to, like, think about it like uh, when we drew our electric fields, right, out of a positive and into a negative, right, and this caused an attraction, it's the same idea. Uh, let's see what happens now with wires. Let me just erase all that. Excuse me. Let's see what happens with wires in the opposite direction. Oh, sorry. Where were we? What happens when we have currents flowing in the same direction? This time we're going to see what happens when the currents flow in opposite direction. The current comes in from the bus bar through this flexible copper strap. Down through this solid copper rod and back up the other side and out this flexible copper strap. Now these are solid copper rods. They don't move easily and the current on one Whoa. side goes that Hello. way and on the other side goes this like way. You now got let's the see what happens. I'll put it in the machine for all at one crack. And stand okay, by to open this it up in case we get any trouble. I want you to set the trouble. equipment so okay, that when you close the circuit work. breaker, you get the full output of the machine through these all at one yeah, crack. Yeah, and stand by to open it up in case we get any trouble. Those are solid copper Okay, let's rods. take it away. There she goes. Whoa, cut it off. Yeah, there it is. Going okay, out. Did you see there, the you see uh, how far it's shredding apart? That was a circuit Those breaker. Those are solid copper uh, rods. There she goes. When we were getting too much current through the machine. Okay, okay five dollars. Did you see the uh, flash out there? That was a circuit breaker. Uh, that opened the circuit when we were getting too much current through the machine. Oh, okay, go ahead. Five. Five hundred. Thousand. Two thousand, four, five. 
So hopefully you noticed the smoke there. So that was, um, if you go back a little bit here. Yeah, if you see here, oh, where is it? It's actually smoking. Five. These wires are smoking because there's so much. Uh, oh, what am I doing here? How did I zoom? All right, anyways, so um, let's go back now. Uh, try these problems where you guys are going to, again, use our right-hand rule. So there's only a few problems, just pretty straightforward. Uh, using our right-hand rule, figure out either the current or the magnetic field. Okay, so um, have fun with this. Uh, we're really starting to look at how, you know, electromagnetism actually works. Um, this stuff is awesome. Okay, so um, good luck, stay safe, and uh, I'll talk to you later.